Hello, my name is Benji and welcome to Dice vs Cards. Today we go back to Arkham Horror, the card game. We've now done series focusing on the Guardian, Seeker and Rogue classes. But today we go full Mystic and bring you a video focusing on those purveyors of the Arcane that come wrapped in purple borders. Detailing what cards you should strongly consider bringing with your Mystic wherever you go. We've got you covered with all the different slot choices and anything that's left over. Up to this point, each class we've talked about has had, in effect, a primary stat. Guardians have combat, Seekers have intellect, and whilst Rogues have agility, they also had to have find differing ways to permanently deal with certain minions and gather clues. Otherwise, they're stuck as support characters in multiplayer only. Well, with the Mystic, it's kind of the same story, except they often come stacked with high willpower, giving them inherent security from the encounter deck. But what that does mean is that they have to tackle the main win conditions of any given scenario in a more indirect manner. So what do we do with our hands in Arkham? We put assets in them. So their game tells us anyway. In actual fact, mystics don't necessarily rely on your average gun or kosh. So the only spicy weapon you can start the game with is the only recently released sword cane. You'll see a lot of this use your willpower for something else, and this is a standout card, as it's only limited by its once per turn use, and the fact that it doesn't do extra damage. On the other hand, XP cards like Grotesque Statue and Spirit of Thame are worthy considerations, with the former offering to bring a bit of consistency to the Chaos Bag, and the latter is a cheap upgrade for spell-heavy builds and for atypical mystics that have a reasonable baseline combat stat. We then have a couple of vital accessory choices in Holy Rosary and St Hubert's Key. Now FFG print only so many primary stat buff cards, and these are two of the best for mystics. Holy Rosary is value on a stick, and as you'll find out, 5 on standard difficulty is still the baseline you want to aspire to, as we'll be doing a lot of our investigating and fighting using our willpower, as you'll come to find out. Now on the one hand, St Hubert's Key gives you less value for Resource, but it gives you more for one slot and gives you some security when you have to investigate with your intellect. Then comes the Mystic's bread and butter, the arcane slot. These are where your spells, which you will invariably have plenty of, call their home. First you've got your spells of the investigate variety, like Rite of Seeking, Clairvoyance and Sixth Sense. Now Rite of Seeking goes next level because of its grabbing two clues for the price of one. But the safest bet's always going to be to sequence your turn so using it is your last action. Its two cost upgrade becomes a much better prospect in harder game modes but still does a job in standard and its four cost upgrade is most beneficial in both harder modes and multiplayer combined to convincingly justify that XP outlay. There's very little to split between Right of Seeking and Clairvoyance other than you can play around the former's downside and the latter currently has no upgrade path. Sixth Sense is the final variation on a theme that only gives you one clue per action, at a slightly lesser cost of three. What you get in return is unlimited charges, and the situationally great positive chaos bag effect. Retaining the use of either location's shroud value is what I really like about the card, and the less said about the four-crossed upgraded version, the better. Ultimately, there isn't a great deal to tell all of these three cards apart. Just incorporate a number of them into your deck dependent on your role and player count. Next up is Shriveling, an Azure Flame, for your brain fighting needs. They more or less do the same thing and scale with XP upgrades in a similar fashion. It's just that the typical choice will always be Shriveling, because of the ability that most Mystics have to tank horror. 
However, if you've got an atypical purple bordered investigator in front of you with an above average amount of health to take the damage, or if you're facing a particularly minion heavy card pool during your current scenario or campaign, you might want to take this instead of or in addition to the shriveling. Alas, before we move to our allies, we have tarot cards and non-slot considerations for your viewing pleasure. The 1xp 4 of cups, arcane studies and blood pact are varying degrees of average to above average. Starting with the 4 of cups, what we have is a strictly inferior holy rosary, costing one more at a cost of 1xp. But if you're prepared to heavily mull for it and you're really tight for accessory slots, then it's well worth considering. Arcane Studies is here, so you think I'm not hiding things from you, but it's just not a card you want to be relying on. By and large, Mystics aren't an affluent class, so what you get for it, even in its upgraded form, is not going to give you return on your investment. Now, Blood Pact is marginally better, sacrificing an Intellect buff for a combat one, and sacrificing a turn in the form of a Doom Counter, makes this a little bit too volatile for my liking. The plus two or plus three skill check and permanent keyword on the upgraded version are all of the good things, but you do have to play this so carefully to make best use of it. Next up then are the allies, those buddies and those pals that are supposed to make your life in Arkham that little bit easier. The three considerations here of Arcane Initiate, David Renfield and Alyssa Graham are all pretty great at the cost of Doom counters, so be thankful you can only have one out at a time. Arcane Initiate gets you access to all those sexy spells a lot quicker that you might have done previously. Obviously the more you go in on spells, the better this card becomes. And the upgraded version brings absolutely nothing to the table. David Renfield is a real sweet card. It does a holy rosary and gives you some resources and damage soak. But obviously if you're able to abuse the resource gain safely, then this card becomes gravy. Alyssa Graham is probably the best of the bunch. Yes, she's the most expensive, but the plus one willpower is the starter. And the no, I'd rather not deal with that encounter card right now effect is the main course. And if you're desperate, you get some horror soak in there too. Mystics, I have to say, have a great deal of choice when it comes to events. So let's not waste no time in rifling through some of your available options. First, we'll start with what I'll call the, uh, no, trio of Ward of Protection, Deny Existence, and Counter Spell. The ward might not look like much, but dependent on the situation, there can be any number of game crippling cards you can draw. And so having this up your sleeve, especially when winning or losing is hanging in the balance, is happy face in a card. The 2xp version is obviously only for multiplayer, and the 5xp version is a tough sell. Deny existence is great because it's free, and it basically negates the possibility of that carefully tuned turn you had planned getting scuppered in any way. And obviously Counterspell is a card that whilst not broken, is one that you're just happy exists for all those times you drew the wrong Chaos token at the wrong time. You've then got your clue gatherers drawn to the flame and read the signs. The former being value on a stick at zero cost, so long as you don't get hosed by the encounter deck. In other words, please let me draw a treachery, which hopefully my super awesome willpower can deal with, as opposed to an enemy. And the latter, despite costing two, has no downside, and can get around a particularly troublesome location. That wouldn't be cool if there were no combat tricks, so Spectral Razor and Storm of Spirits have got you covered. Obviously the value on the Razor does scale well, cracking a 3 health non-elite with this is a beautiful thing, but no matter what you're going up against it's good value. And Storm of Spirits is kind of the dynamite blast for Mystics, 
trading one less damage for a comparative drop in cost. The beauty of this is you can target the lowest fight skill on an enemy and they all take the pain. The rest of the bunch are your miscellaneous category, including Delve Too Deep, which once you play at the very end of the scenario makes the downside trivial. The 2 XP recharge, which more or less doubles most of your spells charges, for the princely sum of Nada. Another XP card in the form of Time Warp, that fits in the same category as Counterspell, where you're just glad the card exists. Acting as a joker or cheat button if you like. You've then got the action efficient version of Emergency Cache, namely Uncage the Soul, that you'll surely have no difficulty in finding a target for. And Moonlight Ritual, a card that scales from bad to meh to good, depending on how many doom hogging allies and cards you're bringing to the table. And now ladies and gentlemen, it's skill time. But unfortunately, the Mystiques are not really renowned for their testing shenanigans. Fearless is a solid but unspectacular choice. And Seal of the Elder sign is the cat's pyjamas. But it costs 5, count them 5 XP. And finally, with special permission to appear here because it doesn't have a purple border, is the ever dependable Guts. Shout out to the Guts, yo. So there you have it, a semi-exhaustive look at all the cards you might want to consider when building your Mystic deck. Obviously each investigator will lend itself and complement different cards to varying degrees, so keep an eye on what your investigator is looking for in a cardboard mate. While you're here you also might want to check out our previous videos to consider what off-class and neutral cards to take, but for now, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.